Hi, in this video I will briefly explain uh, uh, laced uh, or spoked motorcycle wheels lacing patterns and it is primarily intended for me so that I can sleep better because I do intend to make a series of videos series, <laughs> series of videos about building motorcycle wheels and I think it's a good idea to explain why things are done and recommended to be done the way they are and this is just uh, I will cover some small practical things but it will be mostly a boring theory and uh, I have already made a video that explains how spoked wheels in general are built and why a certain method of uh, lacing is uh, superior to other methods. I will make that video pop up now in the, your top right corner and uh, it has a pretentious title, <laughs> science behind the spokes, something like that. But there I explained uh, basically why radial lacing is uh, nonsense and why cross lacing is better. So don't take my word for it, uh, watch that video, do your own, own uh, measurements and experiments and see what it is about. And here I will just uh, briefly touch upon that. This is a bicycle wheel but it is a good and light piece <laughs> so that I can show what I mean. When we uh, lace radially, that means that spokes, here, I'll show it on a hub, it's even simpler. When we lace radially, it means that spokes are coming directly from the hub to the rim. When we lace crossed, what we are basically doing is trying to make this angle be as close to a 90 degree angle as we can without the spoke overlapping the adjacent spoke hole so that we cannot lace it completely. This gives it a lot better bracing angle and makes it uh, capable of handling more more loads and be stronger. So regardless of the number of crosses we are practically aiming to get this angle as much to be as high as possible without it overlapping. Here, this is what an overlap would look like in practice. So, if we have this spoke coming across, we will not be able to, to lace it at all. And it will create another stress point here, because it will introduce a so small kink. That's uh, the, the very brief version. The number of crosses, when we talk about uh, lacing one across or two across or three across and etc. That depends on the number of spokes because if we have a wheel that has 36 spokes here or okay. if we uh, imagine a wheel that has 40 spokes and is built four across that would give us exactly the same angle as if we built a wheel with 20 spokes so fewer holes in the rims and in the hub flanges but we used uh, two across. That would give us exactly the same angle of spokes and uh, that uh, nice uh, alignment that we are looking for. Uh, here we have a, a wheel that is a bicycle wheel but a lot easier to hold compared to a motorcycle wheel and I can explain the basics. And here I've marked uh, with a black color one spoke that comes from the outside of the flange. Here it, here it is, and it crosses, this is a 36 spoked wheel, and it has, it's built three across, so we have the first spoke that comes in the opposite direction that this one crosses, it's marked with red here, and it's right next to it, so people often miss that first one when they count the number of crosses, so we have that one, then it crosses over another spoke, this is this one, that also goes in the opposite direction, and in this case it goes under the third spoke before it reaches the rim. On motorcycle wheels we don't usually do this uh, lacing under. This is for a lot more flexible bicycle wheel spokes that uh, helps us uh, make any tension increase or decrease be 
equalize because as we put any driving torque, uh, some spokes get higher tension, but then they press more out and increase the tension of this spoke coming in the opposite direction that would otherwise have lost a lot of tension. With more motorcycle spokes are a lot more rigid and uh, thicker and stronger and this is not a practical and generally not really necessary. For bicycle it is important and it also helps. So that is when, it, when we talk about uh, crosses. Now, uh, why do we see motorcycle wheels with 36 or even 40 spokes come laced only two across? There are some limits. But the first one I mentioned here is uh, regarding the having uh, the adjacent spoke hole be clear, not closed by, by one uh, spoke. That can be helped if we increase the, the flange diameter. So if we made the whole, the whole hub a bit bigger, that would help us and create some room so that we are not so likely with the same number of spokes and the same number of crosses, we would not be so likely to, to have that problem. However, there is another problem. If we took a spoke to go directly from the, see, let's find the, the one that I marked. Here it is. This is our marked spoke and you can see as it is crossed it goes here. If we made that spoke go directly to the, to the rim it would end up here and the, the angle would be straight. However, since here we can see that it enters the, the rim at an angle which means that it does not come out straight out of the hole but at an angle and that creates a bit of a kink for bicycle spokes that are relatively flexible, that's not much of a problem. The biggest concern with bicycle wheels is not having problems here. However, with smaller bicycle wheels, when we talk about kids' bicycles and even 26-inch wheels, that too becomes a concern. Because the smaller the rim's diameter, with the same number of spokes and the same number of crosses, this angle increases. Uh, if you use some basic trigonometry, you can calculate it. It's no, no secret, no super science, and you needn't take my word for that. So, but, but to just sum this up, the smaller the rim's diameter, the, the greater that angle with the same number of crosses and the same number of, of spokes. Also, with the thicker and more rigid spokes and the thicker spoke nipples, we also have a less... Uh, opportunity and it's more difficult to maneuver those. Now I will show a motorcycle rim. Here is a motorcycle rim and you can see that the... I hope you can see in the camera that this uh, hole is made to go towards this angle and the adjacent hole shows also uh, backwards but to the other side. So this one would be for, for spokes coming uh, into the, the rim from one, one side of the hub and this one for the other. Then as we move on we have the spokes that are in the opposite, going in the opposite direction. Also first one that comes this way and then one that comes on the, on the other side. And that is uh, made to be at these angles to help us when you use thicker and more rigid spokes and to still get cross lacing at least two across with 36 spokes without having a big kink here or spokes breaking off. So that is also another thing that helps us with the lacing. I, I like to say that it's a lot more difficult to make mistakes when you build motorcycle wheels because it's often <laughs> preset so you cannot make a mistake of lacing it with more or fewer crosses or getting the spokes from the, the opposite sides wrong. As long as you start well with the first one, it's easy. I, I will show that procedure in a separate video, but that is the basics. Often with motorcycle hubs, you also don't have to think about how many crosses you will make because many motorcycle hubs, uh, hubs are not like this, but they have like a straight hole that you can just put a spoke through and it will stay at that angle. <laughs> you need a lot of strength and creativity to make it go some other way. If you have a hub like that, you know what I'm talking about. I don't have any here to show. 
But what I will show is the more complicated version when you have hub that looks a bit like this. Here we have one such hub. And the important thing uh, to note is that if you are using a hub that's been used already, the spokes that come from the outside of the hub usually leave their mark. Let's try to show that. I hope this is visible in the camera. Here is the, the mark of the spoke that came this way and also every second hole has spokes going one way at that angle and these holes have spokes coming from the inside going the opposite way. That's not visible right now but this is hopefully visible. So here one, here one and so on every second hole. On the op opposite side I'm definitely not sure if this will be caught on the camera, but we have the every second hole pointing spokes going. I, I've turned this around, so it's the same angle on camera, but on a wheel it's, it's completely opposite angle. I hope at least some of this is visible. So when you are using a, a already used hub, make sure to respect that what's already been created because if you make uh, spokes uh, create another, they will create that when you lace it and tighten it and ride it, that will weaken the hub's flanges and it will increase the probability of hub's flanges breaking off. You are creating another stress point with one uh, dent already being created and nothing uh, filling it in as, uh, as when you make a spoke go and line that. Uh, this, when you use old used hubs, it also helps you determine roughly what angle the spokes should be coming out of, so you cannot make many mistakes when it comes to that, that angle and the number of crosses. So that's another thing to, to consider and pay attention to. Those would be some some basics when it comes to, to lacing patterns. Uh, I will, if uh, I have already explained and shown in my uh, videos and articles how to calculate the optimal length of spokes. For that you need uh, the number of spokes, the effective rim diameter and the important uh, diameters of the, of the hub. Uh, all the measurements are exactly the same when you talk about motorcycle wheels. So what I've shown there in measuring effective rim diameter is also, also goes for motorcycle rims. You will just use two spokes for motorcycle with their nipples and put them in place and measure uh, the way I've explained in those videos. I have some sacrificial ones that I've cut off to be really round figures in centimeters so that I can more easily measure, but you can use the whole spokes, whatever whatever works for you, but everything that I've explained there is, uh, goes for, for building motorcycle wheels. When we are talking about the optimal length of spokes, uh, I will show just now. I won't be making separate videos showing those for motorcycle wheels because all the dimensions are measured exactly the same. You measure the, the total width uh, uh, relative to, the, to where it lies on the frame and then you measure how this far off is from the, the ideal center and, and everything boils down to that. You also measure diameter in the same way, so not, not much differences. But here when we uh, want to build an optimal, this is what we are trying to achieve when we calculate spoke length. Let's show it. We want the end of the spoke to come all the way to the top of the nipple. We don't want it protruding too much. This is a maximum we can achieve. If we go any further, then the spoke, uh, the nipple will start destroying the, the threads because it will come to this wider section. And if we, on the other hand, make it look like this, then this top end of the, of the nipple will not be supported by a spoke in, in the middle of it. And that will increase the probability of the tip of this nipple breaking off and so you have to place another nipple and do the job again. It makes a weaker wheel. So that is what we, what we aim for and that is the basics. 
and in the follow-up videos I will show how to prepare the, the rim and how to prepare the spokes for, for lacing and as far as lacing goes it really does not differ from lacing bicycle wheels only the preparation might be a bit different I like to use anti-seize paste for example when I build motorcycle wheels but that's basically it uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in some other video cheers Thank you.